guys, we're uh, we're back here behind the shop today. It's actually two days since we finished this panel. Yesterday, I just did a little conduit work and, and some other catch-up things I needed to do. You probably weren't going to see most of that on camera anyway. Uh, if you want to see Guy Ben Conduit, um, Shaden HKW has a YouTube channel, Stan Zakowski. Uh, Stan is the master at bending conduit. Uh, he has some uh, YouTube videos on how to do it. Uh, I'm not going to go into it because I'm certainly not an expert. I can bend my own conduit, but it takes a lot of head scratching to make it look right. Uh, I encourage you to go to Stan's channel and check it out. What I did do is I wanted to uh, raise this conduit up here up high. This whole area back here behind the shop is not just used for the shop. I use it for the shop. My kids also use it to wash their hands. Uh, they wash chicken eggs and we wash uh, produce back here, anything that comes from the farm. So this is a multi-use area, so I ran it up high. When I ran it up high, the wires are no longer long enough to make it all the way into the box, so I needed a place to make a junction. That's this box right here. Not my favorite way to do it, to put, a, put connections in the middle of a, a wire, but you know, it is what it is. Also remounted the old switch box here. These wires pass straight through this box. They come into the breaker panel. Speaking of the panel, let me show it to you. Now, this panel is hot right at this moment. Let me explain to you why I made it hot. I have one breaker and one connection made for that refrigerator down there. Uh, a couple days have transpired since we put this up. I didn't want an extension cord out here running the refrigerator, although I'm not above that. It's just, it wasn't much to uh, wire up this one circuit. So it is hot right now. And all of this wire that's in here, we'll pull all of this out and I'll explain to you what this stuff is. This wire right here, they go down for the oven down at the end of the shop and some lighting needs here. All of this is the conduit that comes in at the bottom of the panel that feeds the air compressor over here. As a matter of fact, I didn't have to add any wire. All the wires are long enough. I just had to cut my conduit a little bit shorter and put a, a box offset down here to get into the box. All right, so here's how this panel works. This is the main breaker. When this breaker turns off, it shuts these two strips down the middle with all these fingers on it. These are our bus bars for the power. Each one of these bus bars has 110 volts if you measure it with a power meter. Now, let's talk about breakers for a minute. It is a common misconception that breakers are there to protect your appliance. Um, for instance, your stove, your television, your computer. Everybody thinks that breaker is put there to protect it. That's not true. Breakers, their only purpose is to protect the wire in the wall or the wire that's feeding that circuit. Wire is rated in what its ampacity is. Think of current like uh, water flowing through a hose. The bigger the hose, the more water that flows through it. Current is just like the amount or volume of water. As that current begins to flow through a wire, as that current increases, heat increases. So wire is rated to where it can safely carry current without creating heat. Once it reaches a point where it starts to create heat, the breaker trips. Breakers, their only purpose is to protect the wire for what the wire can handle. So this is a number 12 wire. Number 12 wire is rated for 20 amps. So I have a 20 amp breaker. We have two styles of breakers. This panel is a GE panel. It's made by General Electric. Uh, many different companies that make panels. GE, Siemens, Square D in the United States, they're all very common panels. These breakers fit a GE panel. You've got to know what kind of panel you have to make sure you put the right kind of breakers in it. These are either single wide or double wide. Double wide because when we plug this breaker in, we will pick up one leg on one side and one leg on the other, distributing the load evenly and giving us 240 volts. The wire comes out of the back of the breaker, just like you see here. There's a screw connection here, tighten the screw connection down on the wire and it delivers power downstream to our, our, our load, whatever our load is. In this case, it's a refrigerator and a water fountain for the, my kids. These particular style, they hook in the back and then they just go in and push in and stab in to make the connection. Then we can put our wires in place back here, uh, turn the breaker on and the circuit becomes live. The single phase breakers, same thing, only different. They only go onto one of these little electrical tabs here. You don't want to put all of your 110 breakers on one side of the panel because you'll be drawing the load somewhat unevenly. So you want to try to kind of think about it and stagger out your loads. So you're drawing off both legs somewhat evenly. 
I want to give you a real quick look inside this rotary phase converter. Let me stop by saying this much. I'm really, really, really impressed with the way this uh, rotary phase converter is put together. And you know, a lot of times it's the little things, the attention to detail that really stand out. And uh, let me give you just a real simple for instance. If you've ever knocked one of these slugs out of a knockout, you know sometimes you got to get on them with a hammer and a screwdriver or a hammer and a punch to get these knockouts out. But I think these knockouts are laser cut. And literally it was just one swift tap with a hammer and it came right out. Another thing, the cases are very heavy gauge. They're not flimsy like, you know, the box store power panels and stuff are. It's very, very heavy duty. The door, thought has been put into the door. This door just slips right on and off. This door has all of the controls to start and stop it. But let's say you're working on it and the door is in your way. Well, you can open the door and then take the door off, move it to the side. So it gives you full access right inside this panel to do your work. Now you'll see a bank of capacitors in here. These capacitors are uh, to help start that the idler motor. Um, and what we have here is my power that I've run, I've already pulled in here. So we have our red, our blue, and our black. And then we have the two power leads that are gonna supply power from the 100 amp breaker up there. Then I have a ground wire that came in through another conduit. And then this is just a piece of like thermostat wire. Uh, this will be our signal wire that inside when we finish terminating, we'll be able to start this rotary phase converter sitting out here from a switch on the wall. I've had some time to button this panel up. Everything is done, it's terminated, and we're ready to close this panel up. Here's what I've done. There's two pieces of seal tight that go into the bottom of the box. Seal tight is just a flexible kind of vinyl conduit. It allows this machine to be able to be moved around and still keep the wires in conduit. Through this piece of half inch seal tight here, I just have a piece of number six grounding wire. It comes over and ties to my safety ground bus here. The other conductors that come from this breaker here into the machine and then from this machine to the three phase panel inside, those are in, they're terminated on the inside. They're just not terminated in this machine. This box came from the factory with a bonding bar that bonded the safety ground to the neutral because they eventually have the same potential. And I removed that, that bonding bar so now the safety ground and the neutral are not tied together until they come into this box right here. Also, I added a bonding screw which ties the safety ground to this metal can, which makes this a safe or neutral potential at all times. All the wires are all terminated out. Everything's done. I have a couple of extra connections for here. I even have my little stickers here. So when I put the cover on it, I can label everything appropriately where it goes. I've just been kind of wringing that out. So we're back inside the shop. We're gonna put the new three-phase panel right here. You can see where we drilled the hole from the outside to the inside. It busted through here. Uh, I think I got the drill just a little whoppy jawed there. It was kind of a weird angle I was drilling at, which is perfectly fine because we've got to wind up breaking the hole out about that big. So we're just gonna wind up breaking it out in this area. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to lose the signage that I have here, at least these two for now. I uh, kind of bummed about that, but we'll definitely, um, I really like this sign. So we'll find another place to put it or we'll move some other stuff around. One thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pull this piece of conduit loose. When I pull it loose, I'll have to pull it from the junction box there. I'll lose all the circuits on this wall. That's okay. We're going to reconnect that into the three-phase panel. It'll come through the three-phase panel. It does look like a bit of a mess here, and it is a mess. Let me explain a little bit why it's the way it is. Um, I like to, when I do boxes, any kind of electrical box, I like the wires to be all laid out neat, a lot like Stan Zinkowski does his boxes. However, when I'm laying this, this setup out, not real sure how everything was going to terminate, so every wire has enough in here that I, if I need to move this breaker to this side, that I can bring it over here and still have enough wire to do it. Makes it look a little bird nesty, although, you know, it, it does lay out a little bit neater here in the end. This, plus the extra circuits that I have in here, makes it look a lot worse than it actually is. Now, I know I may get some comments on this. Let me explain a little bit what's going on here. So we got two hot legs. These are number six wire going to the welder outlet. They came off a 60 amp breaker. There's a black wire that looks white. And I use that for my neutral for the welder outlet. And uh, let me explain why I use the black wire instead of a white wire, green wire. White wire uh, didn't have any of it, but I had a whole spool. I think I had a thousand foot spool 
of this black wire. So what I did is I wrapped the whole tape with face tape. Now, people will freak out that aren't electricians and they, you know, they don't understand and it, it's got to be a white wire for the neutral. No, as long as it's phased on both ends, that you know that it's clearly marked that it's the white neutral, doesn't matter what color the insulation is, on, is underneath. The same here. This is my safety ground. It's a blue wire. But every so many inches I have green tape from here to here and then I have green tape here and another piece of green tape back in there so it's clearly marked here and I'm sure it is on that end because I did it that it is the safety ground for this this uh, setup so what we've done here is uh, made the hole bigger uh, the hole is made bigger so that the EMT conduit or plastic conduit whatever I put between the wall here has plenty of room to pass through and we got a little bit of wiggle room for line up the next thing I want to do got a level up here on top of the box. I want to line these two up so they're perfectly level and then mark the hole locations. I'm going to mark at least one hole location. I think the rest of them I'm going to actually drill in place. All right, so uh, I've shortened this piece of conduit that goes from here downrange just a little bit, the width of the box. We're going to put the wire back inside it, make our connections back again. So here's something really nice that worked out that proves the point I was making earlier. This this power cord needs to come down, go over, and come through this box into the inside here. Um, this box really doesn't have anything to do with this box other than the fact that our conduit or our wire has to pass through. But remember before I said I always like to leave enough extra wire so that I can go all the way to the other side of the panel if I ever need to swap breakers? Well, because I did that, I actually have enough wire to come down, come up, come over, and come into all the breakers. I think I can reach all the breakers on this side, as well as my neutral, my safety ground, and the 110 circuits that all go down this side. So I was afraid I was going to have to do a splice here in the box, which I don't like to splice wire. Um, but it looks like I'm not going to have to do any splicing at all. It looks like it's all going to fit nicely. So that's kind of my next step is to get power restored back to this back wall of the shop. So we're going to run the wire through there. And then we'll start looking at figuring out where all our circuits are going to go. So that's going to work out real nice. I know this drives some OCD people nuts, especially people that like to keep their panels super, super neat, which I totally appreciate. And my OCD does uh, tug at me a little bit with this. However, it's times like this that I've learned over time of always being short with wire. And it worked out wonderful because I didn't have to make any extension. There is no other wires that are going to come in or out of this panel and through this panel. Just these right here. All the wires will come from out back into here to feed the main, the three lugs for the three phase. And then out of the breakers, they'll go up through the conduits and out to the other services here in the shop as we need to add more. So here's what we got done. We got the panel mounted, the conduit comes into the panel, the wire is all through there, and it all just ends right here in this panel. I put the cover on the panel just to mainly keep dust out, because if you look, there's no breakers in the panel yet. I'm still sourcing some breakers. The conduit and the wire have been pulled throughout the shop, and almost all of the terminations have been done. One more thing that I did off camera, if you look over here at this panel, right here are these switches right here on the wall. Well, that used to be a double plug on the bottom and a double switch up top. What I've done is I've added a few circuits for a couple of reasons. Those two switches up top now control my two air compressors behind the shop, so I no longer have to walk around outside the shop to turn the air compressor on. If it's a rainy day, crappy day, nighttime, cold, whatever, I can now turn either air compressor on from right here in the shop. Now this switch right here is how I'm going to turn the rotary phase converter on. And if you look right here at the top of this box, it's going to go right here. Once we're done ringing out all the wiring, that'll be a start, run, stop switch for the rotary phase converter. So all my controls here from the shop are kind of in one nice little central location. I don't have to walk two different sides of the shop. Off camera, I went ahead and pulled some wire through the wall to the R from the RPC into this panel. I ran a number four conductor wire. Now number four is good for around 100 amps, and honestly, we're not gonna be anywhere near that. We'll probably be likely be about 80 amps maxed out on that machine out there output. But I went ahead and ran the number four just in case I ever do future expansion and I don't have to run new wire. These wires are phased appropriately uh, following the black, the red, and the blue. The blue is the manufactured leg inside the machine. I also went ahead and ran a neutral. We won't be using a neutral at all in any of our applications so far. But in case any future applications need that neutral to run something like a contactor, I went ahead and just ran a neutral. The safety ground also ties 
to the rotary phase converter and into the panel outside so everything is tied together. All right, well they say things don't always go as you have planned and that would be the case here. Uh, I, my plan originally when Chris Feeble from American Rotary came by the shop was to film us terminating the wires in this panel and, and show you the last step in this. But we honestly, Chris came here behind the shop. He went, yep, that's right, yep, that's right. We spent about maybe five minutes back here uh, checking a couple things out tightening up a few connections and closing the panel up and honestly we were done. We had a great time that day. We did a couple of live feeds. One of them is on the Do Right Fabrication YouTube channel. There's also a live feed on the Do Right Fabrication Facebook page and one on the American Rotary Facebook page. And truth be told, one of the reasons we might not have had as much time before it got dark as we had expected is there might have been a Nerf dart gun war between Chris Feeble and a couple of guys out here on the farm. Chris Feeble, he he took a shellacking. So Chris Feeble, when you're ready to come back and uh, want, ask for a rematch, just let the masters of the dart gun war know. The rotary face converter is hooked up. It's all operational. As you can hear, it, it's super quiet. Matter of fact, inside the shop, you cannot even hear that it runs. So I'm really excited of having this American made product powering my shop. I'm really excited about American Rotary giving me this opportunity to have this piece of equipment for my shop. Be sure to follow us on the do Right Fabrication Facebook page on Instagram and we'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link. Click something. See you soon.